Look at these Bobby Dazzlers. They'll brighten your day up. So we've reached the start of the Cumbria Way. It's a bit warm today though, about 22 degrees it's going to be at. So perfect conditions for hiking. So we're literally only 10 minutes into the walk. It's already opened up into some gorgeous countryside. So starting at Ulverston, and we're going to be camping around Coniston today. Today's section's 15 miles. Starting to see some of the big boys now. So some of the paths aren't as well trodden as I thought they would be. So we're directly on it here. Trail running stuff. <laughs> so we're just about five miles in. So far it's been pretty well signposted. There's little plaques all over the place. There's only been a couple of times where we've not been sure exactly where we're going. So although I do recommend knowing how to read a map, having something like a GPS really is helpful in these kind of situations. Sometimes the path isn't that obvious. So far it's been pretty easy going. It's mainly farmland. All we've had to contend with is the odd little hill, a few gates and some walls to climb over. The views over to Coniston are lovely. And this weather, Scorchio. Feels like we're just coming up to the more mountainous regions. So I've took the walking poles out. Last time I did a multi-day trip. First day I didn't bother with the poles because it was pretty easy going. And then I regretted it for the rest of the trip. So I've done about seven, eight miles before I've dragged these out. It's definitely easier when you're going upwards. You have to keep stopping just to look how gorgeous it is. I'm pretty sure the best is still to come. This is beautiful. Beacon Tarn. Perfect little spot for a rest and a snack.
because of him it tastes like sweaty flip-flop how do you reckon daniel craig or sean connery pretty good this one is so i've just phoned joe i said i've got to go and add up me and andy's going skinny dipping and she says it's more like chunky dunkin what she said i think she's funny Happy days. These views are just ridiculous. We've only got about four mile. I'm hoping to get pitched up on a campsite today in Coniston. Uh, Coniston Hall, if they let us on. It's all downhill from here. This area is stunning. It's all stunning. was moving a minute ago. <laughs> so we've reached Coniston Water. We've got a check of about three mile alongside it. Getting ready to rest my feet and have a bite to eat now though. I've earned this. Cheers, Paul. Well, that was a quick half. So we managed to get in at a campsite. This is called Coniston Hall. And we did have to walk into Coniston itself. They only take cash, £13, but hot showers I've managed to wash my clothes that I had on today. Um, now I can just chill out a little bit. There's a few midges about, so we've lit a couple of those incense burners. It seems to be doing a job anyway. Andy's brought his new x mid as well. Got me washing on the line. I've not bought clothes and underwear for every day, so I'm going to have to rinse it out when I get chance on a campsite or in a stream gonna get dinner on in a minute and chill out so I've got a bit of a war wound some kind of rash on my leg Andy seems to think it's something to do with overheating a little bit I've had it before but it's usually been under my socks So according to my app, I've done 32.87 kilometers today. And I've burnt just over 5,600 calories today. And still a few hours left. So this isn't really going to replenish that. But after the five days, I expect to be ripped. Thank you. 
good morning. Didn't have the greatest night's sleep to be honest with you. So <laughs> might feel it a little bit later on today. We've got breakfast and a brew on the go. Not quite as many miles for us to do today. Just short of 11, probably more than that with a few detours. Um, heading past Tarn House, Elter Water, and should be finishing up around Langdale. Um, possibly a campsite, um, but the National Trust campsite there, they According to the website anyway, you can't just pitch up for one night, so we'll see when we get there. My washing is not quite dry, so I'll just hang that from the back of my pack. I needed somewhere to charge up my phone and my power bank. Campsite's only got them little shaver plugs in the bathroom, but the black bull in Coniston has got breakfast and somewhere to charge your phone. Some of these woodlands are gorgeous. So lucky here in the UK, we've got that much greenery. I suppose it's one of the perks of it raining most of the time. It's a little bit cooler under the canopy as well. This walk gets better and better. So I've been hiking with the pole since the start today. Um, yesterday the little straps on the handles though were bugging me. So I took them off this morning. So much better. What a beautiful little tarn. If it's too cold for them ducklings to have a dip, I'm not going in. That little tarn I was on about is actually quite a big tarn. <laughs> so there's parts of it around here that look like it's been devastated by some kind of storm. Fallen trees everywhere. You can see where the trees have been growing on rock and the roots just haven't been able to get themselves into the ground. But nature always finds a way, the forest will be back. Bowser. So we've only done a few miles today, but been quite a lot of it on these little tracks. It's nice and even, but a little bit harder on the ankles and knees.
I've been really impressed with the signage for the route. There's been little arrows all over the place. You can't go wrong. Um, I'm going to have to confess that I've not brought a paper map with me, um, which is something that I do preach to, to everybody, but I've got all of the routes on my phone. I've got the routes on both watches and I've got plenty of methods to charge them up. So shouldn't have any problems at all. Thought we'd done all the high bit. I don't think they're made for um, backpackers, are they? Probably originally just for a skinny, poorly fed farmer. <laughs> That's all of the steeper hills out of the way. It's all downhill and plain sailing now. Next stop, Elter Water, where we're going to have a chill out and a bit of a break. vegan sausage roll. It's all right. Chester's by the river. Vegan IPA. See it, mate. So this was a little bit of a faff to climb down, but well worth it. I'm probably gonna jinx it now, but I just don't get weather like this. <laughs> Normally there's wind, rain, clag. We've got a, a week, well, at least the five days, fingers crossed of wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. What a spot to appreciate the Langdales and Elta water. Just one cornetto, give it to me. Oh yeah, this is heaven today. There's quite a few people think that the Langdales is the most beautiful area in the Lake District. I'm not sure I could argue with them. So we've dropped Lucky. They've let us stay on the campsite at Great Langdale. Um, they allow walkers on, I think it's £11 a night. Um, a lovely sight, right in the middle of the mountains. Going to get pitched up and then try and recuperate a little bit.
So my war wound doesn't seem to be getting any better. Doesn't hurt or anything. Anyone know what that is? I brought me a little bit of carpet again. I was going to bring a couple of pieces of laminate flooring. Much easier to clean. You can't be putting your feet on a nice bit of Axe Minster. For all those people that asked about it in one of my other videos, it's just a Poundland picnic blanket. It's only a small picnic blanket and I just cut a little section of it off. It's a little bit, well, not more luxurious, but somewhat different to um, my little Z light thing from Thermarest. It's more like homely. It's been brilliant just getting the feet out on the grass. It took a bit of a battering today on the last couple of miles was on that pebble stuff and really started to feel it on the balls of my feet. What I need is Mr. Miyagi to come along with his bowl of fizzing water. Yeah, all is done. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Uh, but I think I think I'll just use my cork ball instead. It's all right for just giving your feet a massage and aching muscles as well. Sorry for all the foot shots in this video. I assume most of you haven't got a foot fetish. Oh, that's nice. Just there. So when I was packing my kit, one of the things that didn't make the cut was a seat. I just couldn't justify four or five hundred grams, but holding over me sleeping pad does the job. It's not as good as a proper chair, obviously, but it's better than sitting on the ground. And it does elevate you enough to make it comfortable. Got to be careful, though, especially if you've got it outside that you haven't got it on something sharp. This is one thing you don't want to burst. And I'd only do it on a pad that I know that they make a chair for them so it's suitable for being folded and taking your weight when you're sitting. I know Seat or Summit do one, as do Thermarest, so if you've got one of those two brands, you should be fine.